receive a meeting of the Mifflin County Board of Commissioners. We'll begin this morning with an invocation by Commissioner Dunko, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon this meeting and the decisions that we will be making today. Lord, let your spirit touch the hearts of every American on either side of the political divide. Let love replace divisiveness and peace replace hostility. Our hearts remember the tragedies in El Paso and Dayton. We especially pray for the families of the victims and ask you to bring comfort to those who are suffering from the loss of their loved ones. During the coming weeks, we as commissioners, the administrative head of Mifflin County, will be making critical decisions as it relates to spending and the development of the county budget for 2020. Give us the wisdom to make the correct decisions for the people we serve. We ask all this in your holy and precious name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the approval of minutes of our August 1st, 2019 meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Approval of the bills. Commissioner Postal. Start as usual with accounts payable. Accounts payable total $1,351,812.18. Payroll account is $348,752.85. 911 account is $333,497.96. There are two checks in the CDBG account for $650. And there is one check in the Act 137 account for $85.25. I will make a motion to pay these bills. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Bills are approved. Treasurer's report. Treasurer Simmons. Our beginning balance was $422,023.05. We had deposits of $497,620.81. We transferred $3,600.83 from payroll. We transferred $1,100,000 from capital reserve. We transferred uh, $302.92 from LEPC, and we had interest of $2,490.12. Uh, we agree with the reading of the bills by Commissioner Postal, leaving us an ending balance of $325,707.90. Our liquid fuels account has three, $364,545.58. Uh, Act 89 has $286,602.94. Our uh, 911 has $1,465,198.29. Our LEPC has 35631 dollars Our local use tax has $292,050.43. Our capital reserve has $9,355,338.32. Our certificate of deposit has three million fifty-four thousand three hundred eighty-nine dollars and twenty-two cents, and it's all subject to audit. All right, thank you. Any questions for Dave? Can you remind me how to the term for the CD? Term? Yeah. Uh, it's it's with eleven months. In. Okay, thank you. All right, motion to approve. Treasurer's report. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Reports approved. Meetings and events. Commissioner Dunkel. Okay. Even though it's the dog days of summer, uh, it's been relatively busy. Uh, we had a CJAP meeting uh, with other members of the uh, court system and justice system here in Mifflin County. Uh, we had a prison board meeting. We had a repository bid opening. We had a department head meeting. Uh, we had a, uh, I had an airport authority meeting which I attended on Monday evening. Uh, last Friday I was in Belfont attending the Central Counties 
detention facility meeting. Uh, that is uh, five counties that have gone together, Clearfield Center, Clinton, Mifflin, and Huntington, uh, to build a facility to house our juveniles. Uh, had an operation fairness meeting, and we had meetings with various department heads, including our election uh, department, uh, where we will have to make a decision here uh, very shortly about whether or not we intend to purchase new election equipment for this county per directive of the governor. Uh, some of you may recall that I had written an op-ed piece uh, in the Sentinel a, a couple months ago. Um, we have been put, and not only we, Mifflin County, but all counties have been put in a, um, uh, a difficult situation in that uh, uh, Governor Wolf, in essence, uh, made an out-of-court decision um, that uh, will now force all counties in Pennsylvania to vote by and have a paper ballot record, which we already have. And our equipment operates just fine. We've made recent software uh, updates, and uh, we are now facing a situation where we either purchase this new equipment and implement it uh, this year or at the latest in the spring presidential primary next year, uh, or if we decide not to do so, we will likely forfeit $40,000 plus in federal funding, which we would likely not get in the future. So it puts us in a quandary as to um, you know what we will be doing, uh, but it's one of those situations that uh, so many times nothing is black and white. It's all some shade of gray, and you just have to make a determination which way you're going to go. All right, thank you, Mr. Post. I attended the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania Summer Conference. It started with the Community and Economic Development Committee that I am on on Sunday, and sessions went through Tuesday. Attended the Mifflin County Hazard Mitigation Steering Committee. This is a plan that must be updated every five years, and it will be sent, or it has been sent to all the municipalities. I encourage all of them to take a look at that draft and get any responses or comments back to their planning department. There was a JVBDS Executive Committee meeting, Prison Board meeting. I attended the Mifflin County Children's Roundtable, which is led by our Children and Youth Services Department. We opened repository bids, department head meeting. As Commissioner Head Dunkel had explained, we had a very lengthy meeting relating to the election equipment, reviewing those proposals. We're going to have to make that decision soon. CEDACOG Natural Gas Executive Committee, Youth Park Association. We all attended a meeting with the Pennsylvania uh, Department of, uh, a representative from Pennsylvania DCED and downtown Lewistown to talk about programs and projects in the county. Operation Fairness, CEDACOG, uh, Joint Rail Authority, and the Criminal Justice Advisory Committee. All right, thank you. I had the Juniata River Valley <coughs> Visitors Bureau Board, the attended the Youth Fair Opening Ceremony, the Cars Board, Prison Board, Department Head Meeting, the review of the election equipment proposals, at the meeting with Marita Kelly from DCED. Criminal Justice Advisory Board and Operation Fairness. I'd also like to welcome Caitlin Corollas from MCTV here today. Caitlin Solo, but we thank her again for using some of the end of her summer vacation to come in here and film for us so that the viewers can see the meeting. <coughs> Do we have any public comment this morning? Seeing none, we'll move to new business. Item A, communication shelter, sharing agreement with Huntington County on behalf of the E911 department for the Butler Knob Tower site. Mr. Lucas, good morning. Good morning. Uh, this agreement will be between Benson County and Huntington County to co locate at a tower location <coughs> for access to one of the state radio towers. The agreement is a 50 year agreement, uh, which, in lieu of paying rent monthly, uh, we're going to uh, reimburse Huntington County for half the purchase price of the shelter, the generator, and transfer switch. We think that this will save us in round numbers over 50 years about $500,000 if not paying rent or paying about $40,000 as a half share on the shelter 
replacement of equipment. But it gives us access to four coverage into the new Hamilton Wayne Township area of the county. It also gives us access to the state radio network, which is part of our upgrade for the police departments. Phil, you mentioned 50 years. I just uh, it says 80 years. I have I have a revised one that I just gave Kathy. That's the expected lifespan of the building itself. They wanted to make sure the term runs with the the warranty on the shelter as opposed to different terms. Okay, thank you. This will eliminate a lot of the dead zone. <coughs> yeah, we're and it's being used to provide coverage from the west facing back to Mifflin County. We won't get Black Hawk Valley, which is on the other side of the mountain. Those will give us coverage along the Juniata River, where we've had several drownings in the last two years. It will give us coverage for portable radios in the Kistler area, which we don't have because the ridge at Wayne Township shades us from the uh, tower in Allensville. So we're hopefully doing final inspection Tuesday of next week. So we should be turning on very shortly. Phil, I want to thank you for your efforts uh, on making this a reality. I know. When I was in Newton Hamilton, I had several firefighters there speak to me about that, this particular issue. So I know they're going to be very, very happy to uh, see this implemented. Yeah, we've been very fortunate in the partnerships we've been able to establish, not just with Huntington County, but also the state. We're using the state tower, which is right beside the shelter, um, and that saving us construction costs of over $300,000. Uh, the shelter and the rent agreement, again, the fact that we're partnering with our neighboring counties on these things save each of us untold amounts of funds over the years as we do that, which years in the past we've never been able to do. And uh, the partnerships we're doing for 911 is making all of this much more economical for each county. And when do you anticipate this will be up and running? Uh, as I said, we're, we're doing that. <laughs> we're actually doing our final inspection. All the equipment's already in place. Uh, we, we kind of push forward on the back end of this to make sure we can get everything set and running. So I'm expecting final inspection next week then over the next two weeks we'll be testing and then we should be live. Good. Thank you. Great. Motion to approve this agreement. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Item B, U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Federal Fiscal Year 2019, <coughs> State Homeland Security Grant Agreement for the period September 1st, 2019 through August 31st, 2022, in the amount of $452,068. Uh, this is a Homeland Security grant. Originally, this is uh, anti terrorism or counter terrorism, uh, but it's now used for all of our first responders in some critical infrastructure, such as hospitals, uh, public utilities, things like that provide training and some equipment to respond to incidents. It's part of a eight county program. Each of the counties has to be a signatory on the agreement. Uh, the state is the administrative agency for the pass through funds. Just over half the funds go directly to, excuse me, just over two thirds of the funds go to training and equipment for those responders. I'll just point out that the other counties are Bedford, Blair, Center, Fulton, Huntington, Juniata, Snyder, and of course, Is this an amount that has increased from before? Uh, actually, it's slightly decreasing each of the years. In the past four years, we've been seeing between five and ten percent reductions, just as uh, it reflects with the federal budget, as as they have miscellaneous cuts. Uh, in years past, uh, and I hate to say, when there are significant events that occur, that money sometimes triples, based on risk assessments. Risk assessments at the federal government level to say these are things we want to make sure that we push out to the local level to address, to trade on for things like that, but. Uh, Fortunately, uh, we're seeing less. Fortunately, we're seeing less and less risk. But the funds to address the risk we do have uh, over the last four years, we've been focusing significantly on active shooter type events, active violence, whether it be houses of worship, uh, education facilities, or just uh, local gatherings in general. Uh, just to mention, in, in our task force, we are the only task force in the state that I know of. Uh, we're actually issuing uh, bulletproof vests to every ambulance service uh, when they take active shooter training. And we're also now pushing that to fire departments where fire departments who participate in training we're also issuing vests so that they can assist in response to active violence uh, events. All right. Motion to approve this. Great. So I'll move. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
Motion is approved. Item C, Memorandum of Understandings for Participation in the Mifflin County Emergency Communication System Upgrade for Law Enforcement Radio Communications, Armal Township, Borough of Lewistown, Mifflin County Regional Police Department, and Township of Granville. Uh, this is an agreement that allows the local police departments to participate in a grant that Mifflin County obtained uh, to provide upgraded radios for the police departments. So those radios will be uh, DHF encrypted radios, which allow them to talk directly to all law enforcement at the state level, whether it's the state police, probation, parole, uh, fish and game commission, anybody who is a law enforcement officer uh, within the state or locally can now or will now be able to speak uh, to each other. Part of a larger pro project uh, where we're replacing our radio system to partner with the state and using grants to do that also. The municipalities are getting this at a great discount. They are receiving about a 90% discount on what list price would have been for radios. If we're able to do that between partnership with the state and receiving grants from the state, we're utilizing not only one funds to make up the difference. All right, motion to approve this. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. At this time, we're going to, we're going to recess the regular meeting for a CDBG public hearing for budget modifications to Lewistown Borough's federal fiscal years 2016-2017 CDBG program. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> this is a public hearing uh, on behalf of Lewistown Borough Council for budget modifications to their 2016-2017 CDBG program. There were excess funds left over for two road reconstruction projects that were completed last year. One was South Wayne Street, and that, had, uh, that was for 2016, and one was for Spring Street that included 2017 money. Uh, the 16 money was $8,117.96, and the 17 money was $22,810.70. Forgot to mention, there's a sign-in sheet that's going around. If you could all sign it, I'd appreciate it. And also, I need to mention that if there's any grievance regarding the use of TVG funds on behalf of the borough, just email me or see me. Uh, so what we were uh, proposing through this resolution, uh, which would be adopted subsequent to the public hearing, would be to um, put those funds into the South Brown Street ADA ramp project so we would increase uh, that project by those both amounts. The budget consists of um, engineering fees, which was approved by you last week with the EADS group in the amount of $12,000. Each ramp, there's eight ramps, and I'll go over those locations. There's two at the intersection of East Charles and South Brown, two at the intersection of East Fleming and South Brown, and four at the intersection of Green Avenue and South Brown Street. Some of these are in the uh, Pendock right away, which increased costs, and also some of them are in the 100-year floodplain, also increasing costs to do the project. We're looking at about $4,000 for each ramp. Uh, we have about $2,400 in delivery money for the environmental review to clear it within the 100-year floodplain and bidding and inspections. We have a total project budget of, of $45,000 Forty-eight dollars and sixty-six cents. This town borough council approved a resolution on Monday evening, August twelfth, and it's contingent upon uh, you approving this resolution to move forward with this project. Are there any questions before we go back to regular meeting? All right, thank you, Jim. We'll reconvene the regular meeting now. We have item D to consider, resolution number 13 of 2019 on behalf of the Lewistown Borough Council, approving budget modification to the federal fiscal year 2016 and federal fiscal year 2017 CDBG program. I have a motion to approve this resolution. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Resolution is approved. Thank you, Jim. Item E, contract time extension request from Jay Fulper of Sons Incorporated for the Juniata Terrace Street reconstruction of Viaduct Way, Hudson Avenue, and Wagner Avenue. They're asking for an additional 15 days to complete the project. Doug Marks, good morning. Thank you. Chairman, Board of Commissioners, 
Uh, this is a contract that was signed back in May, on May 16th, uh, by the commissioners. And uh, we've had some weather delays. Uh, the contractor has, and we've had some extensive rain earlier this year, which has pushed the contractor's time back and caused some delays in starting the project. Uh, so the contractor's asking for an additional 15 days to be added to the contract. Um, the actual construction is being completed. I was started yesterday and is being completed today. So, and if they need to do anything tomorrow, it should be completed, you know, either by the end of the day today or, or tomorrow at the latest. Um, so those, so we're asking for the additional 15 days of time for the contract. Um, I will be coming back to the county commissioners and also for a change, another change order for this project because it's based on a uh, unit price basing uh, for uh, costs. So when we get the actual additional or final um, cost for everything, then we'll be adjusting the figures as needed there. So okay, so this this is just for the time portion. Of it. This extension request is just basically because of the timing issues from earlier this year, not having anything to do with the scope of the work. Right. So no problems with that. Correct. And also, um, there's one signature block, so I would ask that you approve the chairman to sign a contract. Okay. Any other questions for Doug on this? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the extension request and signing of the document. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Thank you, Doug. <coughs> Item F, award notification for the competitive VOCA grant for the period July 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2020. The amount of $47,539. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, we're just asking that you please sign the award notification letter that we received. Um, we initially had already approved the grant uh, back in March, and uh, this is just our official notification and signature page. Okay, is that, is that amount reflected that increase from before? Or? Yes, it did, a slight amount, and it is a non-competitive uh, extension. All right. Any other questions for Jamie? This is an annual grant we're fortunate to receive. Uh, motion to approve. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Item G. Nephilim County State Offender Supervision Fund Agreement for the period July 1st, 2019 through June 30th of 2020. So we don't have Todd here today. This is a one year renewal from yeah. July to June. It looks like it is just an extension of what we have. I'll make a motion to approve. <coughs> is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Item H, two-year agreement with Comcast for phone, fax, and internet services at District Judge Smith's office, $221.70 per month. This is a new two-year agreement. They had a two-year agreement with Comcast that was expiring, and this is just simply a new two-year agreement. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Item I, Mifflin County State Food Purchase Program Agreements for the fiscal year 2018-19. Salvation Army, $6,167.40. Hand of Grace, Grace Covenant Church, $22,244. The Views Network, $6,000. Bible Baptist, New Life Church Food Pantry, $7,049. Bible Baptist New Life Church Soup Kitchen, $1,000, and Calvary Bible Church, $20,604, giving us a total of $63,064.40. Good morning. This is Fisher. Good morning. This is our annual allocation from the Department of Agriculture for the state food dollars that support our local pantry distributions, uh, the feeding program and the abuse network, and one soup kitchen. I want to mention we did see a slight decrease this year. It's about thousand dollars, but that's the first decrease we've had in quite a while in this program. So. And we met with the recipients of this, I believe, haven't we? 
yes, we did the allocation uh, for these at the end of June. They know what they're getting. Uh, we send the contracts out by July 1st, but a lot of them are volunteer boards. They meet once um, a month, and so until they get everything signed back to us, it takes a little while. Is this a case where they're running behind here? <coughs> That it's 2018-19 or should it be 2019-20? It should be 19-20. Yep, sorry. All right, just hold me out right for the record. It's 2019-2020. Yeah. And given the fact that you were cut $1,000, did you just sort of take that cut uniformly across Right, each we other? discussed that um, when we do the allocations because we we're never we never have the exact amount when we do the allocation meeting. I'm about to get contracts out by July 1st. We like to do that, so the board always does a, um, a motion that allows us to um, adjust based upon the percentage that we get. So if we usually we get a little bit of an increase. So if we get you know a three percent increase, then every pantry gets a three percent increase. But when it's a decrease, whatever the percentage of the decrease was, everybody takes that same decrease. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. All right, motion to approve the program. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Finally, we have item J, applications for county aid 2019 liquid fuels allocation. Granville Township, $6,377.02. Wayne Township, $5,040.90. Motion to approve these applications. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. That concludes our business agenda for today. We stand adjourned.